Hey guys, this is Alan with Bothell STEM Coach, and today we're going to be looking at some more free response questions. Um, the last couple of videos have been a little weak on the energy, but this is nominally an energy topic for your response questions that I'm looking at. Um, yeah, this one will have some energy components. There's never usually a question that's purely energy. There's usually usually some setup um, for the most part, so it's hard to just get one topic. But at this point in your AP curriculum, uh, you should have covered kinematics and uh, free body diagrams and springs. So um, these should be doable, even if it's not all energy. Okay. Um, and, and a lot of times, like, you'll get tests from your teachers that require you to understand all the previous stuff. And, and that's what you'll be tested on in the AP exam. So, again, I encourage you to pause this video, read the question, try to do as much as you can on your own, and then come back to the video and compare to see uh, how my results compared to your answer. An ideal spring of unstretched length 0.2 meters is placed horizontally on a frictionless table as shown above. One end of the spring is fixed, and the other end is attached to a block of mass 8 kilograms. The 8 kilogram block is also attached to a massless string that passes over a frictionless pulley. Um, the small block of a small block of mass m 4 kilograms hangs on the other end of the string. When this spring and block system in equilibrium, the length of the spring is 0.25 meters, and the 4 kilogram block is 0 0.70 meters above the floor. Okay. On the figures below, draw a free body diagram showing the label force block when the system is equilibrium. So this thing stretched out a bit, and you know, so this length here is uh, 0.25 meters. Okay. So let's let's do the free body diagram. Uh, I'll do this in blue because we already have it. Um, for this guy, he's got a tension in his. Oh, he's also got gravity, of course, mg. He's got a normal force, and he's got a spring pulling on him, right? And that's everything that's pulling on him. He's got a spring pulling him to the left. He's got a normal force pulling, uh, counteracting uh, uh, gravity, and he's got a tension in the rope. Okay. Now for the four kilogram block, he's got gravity pulling on him, and he's got uh, tension pulling up on him. And that's it. He's got string pulling up on him. Now calculate the tension in the spring. The tension in the spring, t tension in the string, sorry. Um, tension in the string, because it's an equilibrium, these are equal. So T has to equal this mg. Which mass do I use? I use this 4 kilogram block because that's the, that's the free body diagram I'm analyzing. 4 kilogram times 9.8 meters per second squared. Right? Because the net force is to be 0 because there's no net acceleration on this guy. So 4 times times 9.8 is 39.2 newtons. That's the tension in the string. Calculate the force constant in the spring. Okay, in this one, because the net forces are equal, because it's not accelerating, Fs has to equal T. So we know that's equal to 39.2 newtons, right? That's what we just solved, what the tension is. Because the tension is uniform when it's a massless string, right? So the tension is uniform throughout the thing. Um, the spring force is equal to K delta X. So um, I need to know what delta X is to calculate what K is. Well, the unrelaxed is 0.2 meters, and it stretches to 0.5 meters. So this, the change in the displacement of the spring, or how much it stretched, is um, 0.05 meters. right? So K would equal 39.2 newtons divided by 0.05 meters. Just this number divided by this, right? because this is equal to that. So I get 784 newtons per meter. The string is now cut at point P. Calculate the time taken by the 4 kilogram block to hit the floor. OK, so I've cut it, and now it's going to fall. This is a kinematics kind of question, so I'm going to do this one. Um, let me just make sure I have the space up here. D, um, the time it would take you would use this this kinematic equation equals uh, v naught t plus one half a t squared. Okay, the initial velocity of the block is actually zero, so it just and it falls due to the gravity, so it's zero plus one half g t squared. 
So uh, t would equal, I multiply by 2, 2 delta x over g, and I take the square root. Now what do all these parameters mean? Delta x refer to the distance that it's going to fall. That's 0.7 meters. g is 9.8 meters per second squared. Again, a kinematics question, but you know you can kind of see the kinds of things that they have asked before on the old exam. 0.378 uh, seconds. Okay, so that's how that's how far it takes to hit the ground. Calculate the maximum speed attained by the eight kilogram block as it oscillates back and forth. Okay, so now the spring is going to oscillate. Why? Because it's stretched out and it's going to stretch. It's going to let me just see. So at 0.2 meters, it's unrelaxed. And then when it stretches out like this, right, it's going to oscillate going back and forth here. Now, the way you handle, you know, this oscillations is at when it stretched out the most, right before I cut it, it's going to start going this way. Now, it has the most potential energy and no kinetic energy at this point, because at this point, velocity is zero and its potential energy is one half K delta X squared. But then as it goes to its unrelaxed state, the maximum speed, all of this potential energy gets converted into no potential energy and the kinetic energy is maximum and that's one half mv squared. So all of this potential energy will get converted into this kinetic energy. So I have one half k delta x squared is equal to one half mv squared. Okay. Now um, I need to solve for v so the one halves cancel. I can bring, I get k over m delta x squared. Square root of that would be v. Okay. And by these numbers, k is, what did we find? k was 784 newtons per meter. m is the mass of the block. It's 8 kilograms. Delta x is uh, point, no, 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 what do we find this? Uh, it's point zero 0.05 meters, right? Yeah, because it stretched point zero 0.05 meters. That's what the delta x refers to in that equation. Okay, so 784 times point zero 0.05 squared divided by eight, the square root of that, get equals point four nine five meters per second. Okay, and that's it. Again, the last part was kind of entered. Thanks for watching the video, guys. Please leave a comment, like, or subscribe below to catch up more of the content. And see any links below. I offer free homework help on uh, Twitch and Discord. See you guys in the next video.